Yellow is secretly easy in volume two of our beginner's guide. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days here in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. We're doing it again. 30K, Imperial Fist, yellow is secretly easy. And this time I mean it, guys. We're not gonna be doing any crazy transitions. We're gonna be doing some nice yellow up over some nice browns with some basic shading and establishing a nice, clean yellow. This is for all those beginners out there with the airbrush to show you guys how you can achieve the smoothest base coats possible, even with yellow. But of course, I'm gonna throw in a couple of bonus tips, some exciting transitions and whatnot. If you guys don't mind, I'm gonna shout out a couple of clutch individuals over from my Patreon page. These guys came in clutch this week. I've got Scott, Kyle, Eric, Chris, Charles, Julian, Daniel, Mark, Mitchell, the Fit Painter. Thanks guys, I couldn't do it without you. Came in clutch this week. Patreon is the VIP page, early and exclusive access to these videos and more. Let's do this thing guys. We got two gray colors here, Bogren Brown and Mediocre. These are both from the Grinkin line, the new P3 colors. Private to your press all day or day. Airbrush flow improver, never leave home without it. This is a Vallejo product, so clutch. We're gonna put a little flow improver in the old pot, mix in a little bit of the Bogren Brown, stir it up. We've got tons of videos dedicated to this process. We're doing a little gangster gumbo here, backflow technique, getting it all mixed up. Now here is our dude right here, our Imperial Fist 30K Captain Guy. We primed him ghost gray in the last video. In the last video, we scraped all the mold lines down, got them all totally ready and subassembled. And now it's just thin coats. Now with the airbrush in this situation, what we're trying to do is just get the silkiest, smoothest base coats. We're gonna be getting a nice yellow here by the end of the video, a nice clean yellow. Not very heavy on the transition. This is more of a beginner's guide. The transition in the yellow is gonna be very subtle here, just maybe a little bit of this yellowy brown. That's why we chose this as our base coat. We're gonna do several thin coats, work it up, make it its brownest, its yellowish brownish most. I don't know if that was English. That might've been in the reverse order of speaking. Not a, not a word scientist. All of it, just super quick, guys. Bang it down. Stay busy in the Beats Lab. Get all your base coats established. You want to nurture this. You want to always be working real thin and doing multiple coats because that's why we use the airbrush. When you're done with it, there's not going to be a detectable brush stroke. There's not going to be any spotting, anything. You're going to take your time. You're really going to nurture it. We're only working in 22 PSI. Very light on the rock back with very little paint is actually coming out of the airbrush it's mostly that 22 psi uh, air just be patient now here's what it looks like after two or three coats we've really built up that brown and now we're going to introduce some of that mediocre now i like to mix the highlight color 50 50 with the base color that's the next level painting system. That's how you eliminate any weird speckling when you're trying to build a transition. So what you're looking at here is the Bogren Brown, and now we've mixed a little of that mediocre into the Bogren Brown, about 50-50. And we're just redoing a lot of what we just did. We're aiming it more at the flat panels, more of the, the surface area that, you know, try to create a little bit of a transition, but not going too crazy, right? We want there to be a little bit of an interesting play here, but, it's not gonna be one of those like super icy fade to black or fade from black to whites. It's gonna be much more subtle, much more yellow. All right, flash gets yellow. We're gonna mix a little of this in with the mediocre, like we said before. We're working our way to toward the yellowest yellow. And we're doing this by building up these browns. You can do this a lot of ways. You can pre-shade more advanced techniques, but what we are chasing after is the beginner's guide. Everyone can look in their toolbox and see a orangey rusty brown boom step one find a yellow that's kind of close to that a mustardy yellow check two and then just start working a real bright yellow into it you've got these colors in your toolbox i'm using p3 and gw but you might have some other colors that work you might have all gw colors for all i know or vallejo this will work with anything and you see it's immediately popping off the screen it's getting super yellow looking its best. We're getting perfectly flawless yellow, no brush strokes, no spotting, nothing weird. It's not 
a thousand billion strokes with the paintbrush like the old days. Just building it up, getting some nice highlights. We're going to spray it on mostly everything, even things I know in my heart I'm going to paint black to get that nice imperial fist, black and yellow, that pre-heresy style. All right. We're going to take a little Marrow White from P3. Now we're going to do just one little thing that might not be super beginner, but we're going to mix a little of this white in with the yellow. It's going to make it pastel, which is undesirable. I repeat, that is not what you want it to look like. What we're doing here is creating just a little bit of a highlight, and we're going to let it dry. And then we're going to take the same yellow, that perfect flash gets yellow, and we're just going to go back over it real easy. So we're just staying busy in the Beats Lab, knocking everything over. Not a, not, not a holding things in my hand scientist. I don't respect things that are smaller than my hand. It's a, it's a condition. There it is. So this is essentially a pre-highlight. Now here is our flash gets yellow, super watered down, and we're just gonna go back over those highlights that are super pastel and ugly. And we're gonna yellow them up real fast. It's super easy. And what we've done here is created a super exciting yellow transition without it being pastel. That's kind of a quick way to do it. When you get to the end, and you wanna create a nice little transition, but you don't like when your paint looks pastel because you added white to it, this is what I like to do. You just thin down. I mean, look at how th so insanely thin this Flash Kids Yellow is. And it just, there it is. He's yellow, he's looking great, magnificent. All right. Gloss Varnish, this is an ancient Chinese technique. This is one of our simple beginner guides right here. Vallejo Gloss Varnish in your airbrush. You can thin it down with airbrush thinner or even flow improver or just a little water. And we're gonna just gloss varnish this dude right through our airbrush. To not to, it's not too difficult. What you're trying to do is make it look shiny and look wet and maybe right as soon as it starts building up and looking a little milky, that's when you stop. We want it to be protected, hardened, but we don't want to wipe out the details with the gloss varnish. The reason we use the gloss varnish, we've explained it a billion times and I will cover it here again, don't worry. But for now, we're gonna stay busy in the Beats Lab with a little Grave Digger denim and a little Thalmar Black. While our gloss varnish is totally drying for to set up our wash stage, we're gonna start doing a few quick base coats on this cape. And this is one of the primary reasons we did a sub assembly here. So this is basically a coal black. We added a bunch of that uh, grave digger denim to black, blued it up a little bit, and we're gonna do a real thin base coat here. Gotta do this with the paintbrush, that's the only way. Keep it real thin, like insanely thin here. And we're gonna do basically two coats. Complete, get maximum coverage, but don't keep working it back and forth and letting it peel off. Just get a nice thin coat. Don't let there be any weird buildup of paint, but they're gonna be brush strokes galore. I don't care, you'll see. Two, two coats is all we'll need though, you see, boom. Look how easy that goes down. Very thin, decent coverage, but not enough. Be very careful, don't get it on the yellows, painting by numbers here. You don't wanna have to redo things that you just did. That easy. All right, coat two, that's totally dry now. Pow, pow, pow. And this is gonna do mostly everything we needed to do. We're gonna come into the airbrush after this and just combo off of these two base coats and start doing some exciting transitions. Though this is a beginner guide volume two, this is part one of painting our Imperial Fist. So I'm gonna splash in a little beginner stuff and a little bit of advanced stuff. So we're gonna basically build up an exciting transition on this cape. I chose these dark colors like the blacks, which look really good against the yellows. I didn't want to do red because I think the red red's too much of the of the, the 40k vibe. So I, I went with the black, but I want to make the black exciting. So here's how we're gonna do it. Arcane blue from P3, one of the best colors in the business. We're gonna mix a little of that into our coal black mix we already made. We're gonna use this as the highlight color. And we're gonna draw from the two previous colors we mixed together, pour them in our airbrush, because I saved that mix, and we're gonna very thin, very slow, and very methodically build up a cool little transition. This is so thin, guys. Now, it's not water thin, but it has plenty of Vallejo Flow Improver in it. And what we're doing is eliminating the speckles. You see, we're getting a very tight transition. We're not seeing any weird speckles, no graininess. 
but it's not a big deal. If you start to see graininess, all you gotta do is clean the tip of your airbrush. Usually you have some buildup there. And even if that doesn't fix it, all that means you have to do is thin it down more. And the way to fix the graininess is just to go back to the first color that we were paintbrushing on, put it back in your airbrush and just wipe out any of the fuzz you see that you don't like. Pretty easy. But here we go, we're getting a nice solid transition. It's real dark, it's still got that black in it, but it's got the coolness of this blue. Really looking good against this super flame yellow. Absolutely love these types of color transitions. You get the contrast and you get the color theory. I'm not a scientist. We're gonna keep building up the highlight, adding more and more arcane blue to the mix. And then eventually we're gonna just dump the pot and use a little pure arcane blue. But we want that amazing pop right here in the ends of the cape right here. We want, you, you know, that's what gives you that flamey, cool, just eye-catching center, you know, centerpiece in your army to have something like this. Now, we did cheat. I did mix a tiny bit of white in. So, <laughs> can't lie, that's not pure arcane blue. But that's how you get that beautiful just pop. People are going to see that model from two tables away and come over and compliment you on it when you do stuff like this. That's why I don't like super dark armies. I like keeping things bright. All right, Plastic Putty. We did this in volume one. I'm going to show you my personal process. Okay, we put them back together. I did my best to glue them back together, but there's a gap here. I just can't do anything about it. We're going to have to fix that gap. I'm not going to let that ride. So we're going to just water down this Plastic Putty. This is from Vallejo. It's an amazing product. You can use a... I have a paintbrush I use just for this and I keep it as clean as I can. We're gonna water it down and just kind of paint it into that gap and then feather it away like it's paint. Real easy. We're gonna seam that gap up, let it dry. If it still is too much of a gap, we're gonna put a little bit more in. But it's cool because we're gonna paint that black. So. All right, here we go. Wash time, light tone, army painter, best washes in the game. Quick shade, mixing medium, mix these two elements together. And this is gonna create a cool little sepia color that's very thin. And you're gonna see right now why we use the gloss varnish. The gloss varnish is like glass. It breaks up the surface tension. And this wash, which we totally thin down to be the lightest clutches sepia tone, is gonna disperse itself. It's gonna use gravity. It's gonna go in every direction. It's gonna find its way into all the crevices and create the maximum detail. It's going to create natural little shades. It's going to ring little nuts, little bolts. It's going to find the border of the broke armor trim. That's going to give us a nice little shade in the yellow region. Now, this is very important. This gives us a lot of contrast for very little work. The gloss varnish is going to lock in our airbrush, so it's not going to rub off with our fingers. It's going to stay protected. Simultaneously, it's going to help us do an instantaneous contrast. Like, we're not pin washing. We're just washing it and it's gonna stay super protected, giving us a real good look. It's gonna pull away from the surfaces. It's not gonna stain our big, broad yellow surfaces. This is my favorite wash formula in the game. And there it is, guys. Volume two of the series, step one to create an Imperial Fist Marine. Here he is, I tweaked the lighting so you can see him looking as yellow as he really is. Kind of a hard color to light. Stay tuned, guys, next week we're gonna bang these details out. Anyway, play on, players.